Hello guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then welcome. And if you are returning, then thank you so, so much. So as you can tell from the title, this video is gonna be all about my first year being self-employed, the lessons that I've learned, and I'm gonna give you guys the real, raw and honest truth of the journey that it's been over the past year of being self-employed. So if you wanna stick around and watch this video, then grab yourself a cuppa, grab yourself a drink. I would be having a Coke Zero right now, but I'm not allowed Coke Zero until about 5 p.m. today and it's currently quarter past two I'm trying not to drink Coke Zero in the week and just leave it for weekends so I'll be joining you guys with my water and let's get into it so for those of you who already know my story who follow me on YouTube who connect with me through the Breakthrough Society or who have enrolled in the Manifest Academy you guys will know my journey you guys will Probably not need to watch this bit, so feel free to skip to the next section. I have added timestamps at the bottom, so you can kind of navigate your way through this video if you only want to watch specific parts. But for those who don't know, I'm going to give you a real quick whistle-stop tour of my career history and where I'm at now. I worked for a global FMCG company for six years as a degree apprenticeship. So what that meant was... I enrolled in like a scholarship almost, the company paid for my degree and I had to manage a degree and work full time as well within the business. So within this company you gain experience in like sales, marketing, HR, supply chain for six months and then in dissertation year you specialise in an area that you feel best fits you, that you kind of see your career I guess taken off in. So for me that was sales and I absolutely loved the opportunity that this company gave me. I tried so hard to get this. I actually got rejected when I first ever tried to apply for the scheme and it just made me more determined to get it. So long story short, I did end up finally getting at the position and spent three years obviously studying the degree, graduated with a first class, which I am so proud of myself for. I moved down south at 18 for this job and honestly, even that job alone, well, I say job, the, my career within that company taught me so many lessons and definitely gave me so many life lessons and learnings that I've now definitely taken into being self-employed. But I worked in that company for six years and then obviously left this time last year. And it is my one year anniversary today, so happy anniversary to me. Um, but I, within about a year to two years of working at this company, I started side hustles. I started network marketing businesses, selling skincare, you name it, I tried it um, for a few years and then moved back up north, managed to buy myself my first home, which I'm so grateful for. Started a new business within the travel industry, um, just as a side hustle and also then began taking Instagram more seriously, became a micro-influencer, started YouTube and just started to really understand what life might have to offer. And what's really important about this video is just becoming aware of the glamorization and the glamification of the laptop lifestyle and becoming your own boss and working for yourself and all of this narrative that I feel like we're just fed every single day. I'm actually gonna talk about the reality of it because I was really, really bought into this culture for literally four years whilst being employed and being at a job that I ended up resenting because I just felt like there was so much more out there for me. Please, with the best integrity, work out what it is that you want to achieve out of life because there is nothing wrong with having a career and having a job and I do feel like that is sometimes the danger of anything. The network marketing businesses that I've been part of, sometimes the language that I use, because a job wasn't for me and a career, you know, in the corporate world didn't end up being my path. I never want anybody to, I don't ever want anybody who works in a standard job or a nine to five or anything to think that that is wrong and that you should be trying to do more and own your own business because it isn't for everyone, okay? And I do feel like that's something that whilst yes I'm doing a video about you know being self-employed and there are some successes some incredible successes I'm the happiest I've ever been there is also a pressure I feel like it puts on people and self-employment is not easy being your own boss is not easy not knowing when your next paycheck's coming in is not easy and they're all the things that we're going to talk about in this video but whilst I was doing these businesses alongside, like I said, I really kind of bought into this culture of being your own boss, like, you know, getting the nice cars that I saw everybody getting, getting their houses, getting their handbags. I really bought into that, like, CEO, boss babe, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, and started building businesses alongside. So 
like I said, I ended up quitting my job this time last year, um, and that was primarily through to building up my travel business. So that was within network marketing, and then also just building up my um, micro influencing and also starting on YouTube as well. Although YouTube, I wouldn't class as a full income. Um, it probably could take me to the cinema like a couple of times a month, but that's about it for now. I do just do YouTube at the moment because I love it. Um, but yeah, so fast forward, I quit my job. I actually handed my notice in in July 2020, but I ended up staying for an extra six months just because of company needs. It just kind of fit with what I needed to do. There wasn't really a definite cut off point where I did need to leave. It was just a decision that I made. Um, and here we are now with another business under my belt, um, which is actually now my main focus. And yeah, I cannot even, the fact that I've even survived this 365 days is an accomplishment in itself because it has not been easy. And I'm going to take you guys through the lessons now. So hopefully that gave you a little backstory as to like where I've been, my journey, the businesses that I've done, um, and how I got to where I am today. So lesson wise, well, 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 self-employment taught me so many lessons. For example, number one, the work ethic that you can apply in a career, oh my gosh, it needs to change if you become self-employed. Like you, the thing is when you become self-employed is nobody is telling you where to be, what to do, when to get things done by, you set your deadlines, you set your work schedules, you set your goals, you set the standards, you don't have to report into anybody and that is incredible. Do not get me wrong, I've had the best year of navigating how to be my own boss and how to run my own business and everything like that but it has been so tough. I got so lazy, I lost the schedule completely, I just floated for weeks and weeks just kind of doing things but with no real agenda. I found myself just relaxing. I, it was literally like I had just quit my corporate job and just gone and just relaxed. And that is definitely not how to approach being self-employed for your first year because this is the time you need to be putting the most effort in, making sure that you know you make it a success. There is nothing, you know, less that I wanted to do than not have the success and then be dragging my heels and having to go and get a job again. So there was a big, big lesson around time management, scheduling, and that's something that again, like you don't see this side of things when things are glamorized. You literally have to be incredibly disciplined. When I was at work, if I had a meeting at nine, it wasn't discipline that got me sat on that call. It was the fear of not turning up and getting told off or people noticing that I'm not on the call and then ringing my phone and waking me up. And, you know, I've got people that I would be letting down and reporting into. Now, where I'm at, I don't report into anybody. Nobody tracks my progress, how I'm doing. It's all up to me. And that was a real, real hard lesson that I had to learn because for the first six months, like I said, I was just living my best life. I still work, do not get me wrong, I still put so much energy into my business and I did leave mid-global pandemic as well. So, you know, there were a few factors that probably made it a little bit more difficult, but I just found that time management, scheduling and everything like that went out the window and I found myself getting quite lazy. I was just doing tasks, just to kind of for task's sake and not really having a clear agenda, a clear plan. I didn't have anyone to report into or document or stay accountable to. So it meant that my standards really started slipping with business and I didn't actually even launch my first like product as such on the Breakthrough Society, which is now my main business. That was eight months into me being self-employed. I only then launched my first income stream through the business that I actually left my full-time job to pursue. Um, I was still getting the travel business income and you know, I was getting dribs and drabs here and there, but I didn't even make any progress. And that was simply because of lack of time management and just not understanding the level of discipline that you need to have. And that's just a lesson and a tip that I would say to anybody is, yes, it's incredible. Oh my gosh, I don't have to set an alarm if I don't want to. I don't have to have reporting to anybody. But I also then, it comes with a responsibility that you have to take as somebody if you want to be a business owner or a, you know, self-employed or a CEO or anything like that. You need to understand that that comes with a responsibility and I definitely completely forgot about that for the first six months and it definitely bit me in the bum. Um, so I definitely say time management, scheduling, time blocking, setting an agenda. I, I now know that I am the most productive if I get up 
I get ready, I do my makeup, I put my perfume on and I put an outfit on that's not just comfies. Because if I'm just sat slobbing around, the TV goes on, my laptop's out, I'm getting things done but there's no urgency, I don't feel that much get up and go about myself and that's a big tip if you are wanting to go self-employed is just get up, get ready as if it was a normal day, go and do your morning routine. Morning routines are so important and this is probably point number two is start the morning right. Don't do what I did for the first, you know, six months and don't worry about setting an alarm, just get up, stroll through the day, do what you fancy, when you feel like it. And that's incredible, like how amazing that I can say. Uh, it's such a privilege to say that I get to have them choices every single day. But it definitely didn't take me any further and I actually hit a blip within about six months where I started to worry financially and I thought, am I actually going to be able to, to do this? Like it was such a scary thought. I panicked so much i was so petrified that i was gonna have to get a job and i'd made such big bold statements about becoming self-employed and you know i started facing them worries of like oh my gosh like money doesn't just come in once a month anymore like you have to work for the money that comes in and that's another thing just to be really really careful with is understanding like your affordability like can you actually afford to quit i saved six months salary but i think by the time i quit Eventually, it was probably down to like four or three months because it did just start burning the hole in my pocket. I was getting used to earning like two salaries at the same time and I definitely started spending it. So getting a handle on your finances before is super, super important because if not, financial maturity is so important. I've got a mortgage to look after. I've got bills. I've got my car. I've got to live. Um... And I didn't realise maybe the responsibility that it had because I just grew up knowing that you get that one payday every single month and it hits, it's fine. And I know some of you guys might be watching this thinking, is she just really naive? Like, of course that was going to change. But I think until you actually go through it, you don't understand like the transition that you have to do mentally of cracking on and being disciplined and managing your finances differently. You know, I had to really adapt to from a monthly pay to a weekly pay and sometimes daily pays, understanding how to pay myself and manage that, which being completely transparent, I'm still navigating that process right now. Um, the same with tax. I'm three years into paying it, self-employed, but I'm still having to learn new things every single day and my tax bill was way higher than I ever anticipated this year because I still had a little bit of my like job that overlapped, so I used my threshold and there were so many things that I had to learn. So I guess so far the points that I'm making you guys are aware of is make sure you have a good morning routine so that it sets your day up for success because before you know it, it's two o'clock, you haven't done any work, you're then panicking but because the finance hasn't hit you yet and it's not scaring you, you kind of just keep ticking along. So making sure you've got a clear morning routine, making sure that you schedule as well, set yourself a work schedule just because you don't have anywhere to be and anybody to report to, it's really healthy to set yourself some work time because that's another thing. I'm sorry this is a little bit here and there but I, this is such an impromptu video. I found myself working until 11 o'clock midnight, <laughs> countless nights. If that was my job at the time and anybody asked me to work 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, I would have been like, absolutely not. But because my time management went out the window, I found myself working at 11, 12, working at the most random times, inconvenient times, because I didn't get a handle on my daytime schedule. Um, so make sure that you have a clear schedule and uh, try and stick to it because, you know, we don't all quit our jobs to have, you know, I didn't quit my job to then have the same schedule, but... I definitely took it to another extreme so that is one really big learning um that i took thirdly is get up get ready start the day properly i guess it kind of fits into morning routine but i get so much more done and i'm more likely to leave the house to go on a walk if i just get up and get ready doesn't necessarily mean makeup and hair it doesn't necessarily mean putting your best clothes on but literally not just putting my pyjama bottoms on or joggers and just actually trying to put an outfit on it really helps me kind of get in the mood get in work mode um, and kind of focus and also managing finances as well understand the shifts that are going to happen you know how much are you going to pay yourself a month when you start getting dribs and drabs for me I get money from my one-to-one -one clients from my courses from my travel business from Instagram there's so many different sources of income that I have to manage that for the first oh gosh longer than six months I've only just started getting a handle on it now 
I was just kind of like paying myself as it came in and it was just coming in and it was my money and that's not a way to handle your finances maturely um, which is definitely something I'm learning and this is the thing guys I'm not going to come here and tell you that I know everything because I don't I'm navigating the journey of self-employment every single day I'm 24 I I'm still in my first year I'm still learning so much but I'm still so proud of myself and if you guys are facing any of these struggles if you guys are thinking about self-employment take these lessons on board you guys can absolutely take action and implement anything that I'm saying and um, to get you guys prepared for going self-employed another thing that I want to mention as well is getting yourself a good workspace I have my office upstairs which I have changed three times since last year because I need to change up my environment to feel inspired. I got like this beautiful like grand desk and it felt amazing and for a few months I was inspired but I was facing a wall and I was like I can't literally sit and look at a wall every day and try and be creative and do content and everything like that when I'm literally sat facing a wall. So I got rid of that. I got literally the cheapest desk in Ikea to face the window and that inspired me again to be able to look out the window and get some natural light in my workspace that I enjoy being. At the moment, I'm actually in a habit of working downstairs because I'm finding that I'm a little bit more inspired when I've got the TV on in the background and I can just work alongside some background noise. I've been doing work dates in hotels or at Starbucks just to change up the environment because the issue is, especially because I went self-employed in lockdown, I only really had my house and it felt like work was everywhere. Like I would come downstairs and my laptop was there. That was work. Every piece of work that I do goes through my phone. There was my camera. There was it just felt like work was everywhere and there wasn't a clear cut off point in my mind to when I started work and when I finished work which again probably triggered me to then be working all the time and creating a real unhealthy relationship with the work and the input that I put into business so I would definitely encourage you guys to change up your environment like just go out to the coffee shop meet a friend have a work date go go to another city work in a hotel I've done that before when my mum goes to work in Liverpool I've gone with her and then met somebody at a cafe and worked with her all day and that is so inspiring you can bounce off other people you can feel less lonely as well because that's another thing is you're doing it on your own okay I live on my own I work on my own my businesses are just mine and that can be really really difficult and that's something that I've now had to learn and I've got a system in place now for this year so the way that I tackled that was Grace who is my best friend she was my accountability partner in the travel business that's how we became best friends we now set every single month we have tax reviews we have check-ins for where we are with business and our goals we have quarterly reviews as well where we will sit down and strategize and talk about it, visions and future plans and we'll just bounce ideas off each other and that's how we've decided to structure it this year because I'm not disciplined when I don't have somebody to be accountable to. I need somebody to be accountable to and somebody to get inspired and excited about my business as well as me because it can feel a little bit lonely. Sometimes you can find yourself second guessing every single decision that you make because you're not running it past anybody. Um, and you also know that because it doesn't really affect anybody, nobody's giving you advice as if they were in the business with you as well, if that makes sense. So far, because I've been saying so much, I'm just going to keep recapping to make it clear. Getting started for the day, making sure that you know you feel good, you're getting dressed, you're getting up, you are starting the day clear, having a clear schedule, like time block in your diary if you need to, when you're going to do specific things, but also allow yourself some flexibility, okay? Nobody quits a job to not at least reap some of the benefits. Thirdly, it can be lonely, so make sure that you're connecting with other people. You know, if you enroll in the Members Lounge in the Breakthrough Society, that's where you can connect with so many other ambitious women. We have so many different entrepreneurs in there, business owners, people that just want to improve and self-develop and everything like that. There are so many ways to expand your community and make the journey feel less lonely. Connect with people that are on the same journey as you, the same path, friends that have the same vision as you, um, and just try and make the process as enjoyable as you can because it's not like work where you can have a good old moan over a cup of tea because a project's going down the drain or something's happening you really you know you are on your own so it's really important to note that also morning routines that sets your day right okay that sets your day reading journaling visualization exercises drinking your water getting your body moving whatever it is 
habits. Get that morning routine that makes you feel inspired. Start habits that are going to get you out of bed and inspired to actually start the day. And also finances is so important, like I said, because that was something that I really had to adapt to. I also want to mention less about being self-employed, but more just about turning your passion or hobby into a full-time income and lessons that I had to learn because when I was doing my businesses outside of the hours of my corporate job they were what I looked forward to I was so excited to get inspired and you know I had the time and the breathing space because I had a stable income always coming in so I had the breathing space to feel creative be inspired come up with new ideas really really enjoy it and that was my release you know that was where I got really excited to work on things and everything like that when you then turn that into your sole income and there suddenly is that pressure on it things can change and the relationship with my business has changed because it wasn't just a hobby anymore it was my true source of income and it was something that I needed to make work so that's just something else as well like everybody says you know you should turn your passion into a business or your hobby into a business and absolutely it's incredible to do what you love but there are also risks with that too and I don't want this to sound like I'm trying to talk anybody out of this because it was the best decision that I ever made but I just want to make you guys aware you are taking something that is once your maybe release or your what you do in your free time to get inspired and get creative it can then flip and when it becomes your sole thing to focus on and there's pressure riding on it and you need to make it work the relationship does change with it and now I almost have to find different hobbies as my release then from business because I can't always be in my business head and trying to focus on that so I just wanted to mention that too because I don't think that's really talked about too much either um, but prefacing the next section which is just the more highlights and everything like that is I understand I'm in a privileged position right now. To have this option, I am truly grateful that I ever had the opportunity to do everything like I did on the side, build that up to a stage where I could then leave my corporate job. I'm also truly grateful for my corporate job, for providing me with the life lessons that I probably needed over the years, for providing me with a degree, for providing me with a stable income and allowing me to work up, you know, the corporate ladder for the space of time that I worked in employment with this company. So I understand that I am coming right now from a position where I had choice. I could stay, I could do it as a side hustle or I could choose to do it full time, which I did. And I'm truly grateful for that. Any of the lessons that I discussed in this video, anything that I'm about to discuss, please don't take this the wrong way or take it out of context. There is also a lot more about my story that hasn't been talked about in this video and I talk about it in a lot more detail within the Manifest Academy and also if you connect with me on socials as well you'll be able to see a little bit more about my journey because a 25 minute 30 minute video isn't going to capture absolutely everything. I'm just here to kind of talking about the things that I've learned. So the successes, the good bits, the happy bits, the bits that I am sat here a year later and I want to celebrate for me and to share with you guys, you know, the good parts of being self-employed. You do get to truly live life on your own terms. I am flying out to Dubai Sunday. I'm coming home because I need to come home for a business event. But I now have the luxury if I want to just pick up and move away. I absolutely can. If I want to take my work anywhere, I can. And I'm truly, truly grateful for that. And I would never have had that opportunity to experience life the way that I can now if I hadn't have taken that risk. And it was a risk. It was absolutely a risk. But it was the most well paid off risk that I could have taken and I'm really really am grateful. Um, I think especially given like the pandemic and you know having to be stuck at home and not being able to experience things. That's something that's so high up on my vision board and my goal board for this year that I know I'm going to be able to tick off because I did take that risk. I put all my energy into online businesses because then it allowed me to have a true location freedom and I'm really really grateful for that. Um, you know there are so many benefits it's truly yours when I worked for somebody else I always knew that I was working on somebody else's dream and somebody else's project on somebody else's watch on somebody else's times and I'll never forget reading a quote once that said your inbox is just a place for everybody else's priorities and oh my gosh when I read that it resonated with me so much and it made me realize like I was living life 
serving everybody else's priorities, getting things done for other people, you know, doing tasks and to-do lists and whatnot for everybody else's agendas. And I love that now I can just push mine. I can just push what it is that I want to achieve for my business. I've got full control, full direction, full vision, you know, and with that does come responsibility. I don't want to take that away from it, but I do feel truly grateful that every day I think about where I want to take my business, how I want to help more people, impact more people, coach more people, deliver value for more people. And I truly believe I'm living out my passion. I believe I'm living out my life's purpose with the Breakthrough Society is helping other people and being able to help other people change their lives and overcome living and beliefs believe in themselves and just achieve more and that is truly one of the best feelings in the world knowing that you are getting paid to do something that you probably would do for free or I would have definitely at least done it for free when I had a job because I love it that much I would have done it for free and I guess I'm just so grateful to be sat right now in my own home which I was able to purchase at 22 with one of my dream cars sat on the drive, the ability to pick up my laptop whenever I want and work wherever I want and I will never ever 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 not sit and count my blessings every single day for the opportunities that I was given along my journey that opened different doors that allowed me to take on more opportunities and learn and grow and fail and everything like that. I really really am grateful and you know, everything that you could imagine self-employed life to be, it is also that too. It is the lions, the getting to work from coffee shops, shopping when you want, getting a nail appointment. You know, I love not having to say to my nail lady, I can't do that time. She knows she can give me any time in the day and I can be there. And the beauty of that freedom is just, even that, it sounds so silly, but I'm so grateful and that's all I ever wanted was to live this kind of life. And... I guess that's why I wanted to do this video to kind of show you guys the two sides of it as well because it is incredible but I could also pick up my laptop and go to Dubai for four days if I was employed too yeah because there is annual leave there is such thing where we get holidays and we get to then work on other things and you know my best friend at the moment she absolutely could leave her full-time job but that's not a priority for her right now she is absolutely enjoying the income that she gets from her stable job you know she's not unhappy in that job right now so it makes sense to stay and then reap the rewards of all the other businesses that she does everybody's journey is different and please don't let the glamorization of working from home and laptop lifestyle and all this stuff pressure you into making a decision too prematurely okay because everything does change and if you're not ready for it it can really catch you out and then you can feel even worse for it um the only reason i left is just because i got to a stage where i did like i said i, I dreaded it i got sunday night dread i didn't want to work i i just felt so trapped and i knew that my spirit was way too free to be trapped in a nine to five and even the language i'm using is probably a little bit too negative because i wasn't trapped but i knew that my energy wasn't it didn't belong there it belonged where it is right now and I truly believe you have one life on this earth in this form anyway in this body take the opportunities if you want to do it and it is a risk do you know what a life is better filled with oh wells than what ifs in my opinion and as long as it's a calculated risk you understand the pros the cons the benefits what could go wrong what might go right what you actually want the vision um then you can absolutely achieve anything and I hope this has helped I know it's been a little bit here there and everywhere but I didn't want to sit with notes and do too much of a structured video because I feel like it can lose the true authenticity of it and I wanted to make this as authentic as I could to kind of guide you guys through making that decision, through feeling supported, knowing that somebody else has done this and, and been there. You know, if you're going through this journey right now, I'm with you. I'm sending you guys my love. Um, and yeah, that's the end of this video. There's probably so many more things I could go into. So if you do have any questions about it, how, what the business is, anything like that, how I run my day, let me know. But yeah, I'm truly grateful. I cannot believe it's been a year. I'm intrigued to know what stage of the journey you're on, if this is something you're looking into. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. I need to drink some water because it is definitely past 10 a.m. And this is my first bottle of the day. So, so we're going to drink our water and then I'll catch you in the next one.